So I wanted to start talking about um, CDMA, or spread spectrum. So spread spectrum, um, some of you may know this as CDMA, but it actually encompasses a whole variety of techniques that are more general than CDMA. Um, I will also point out that although uh, so GSM and CDMA have been competing technologies, and it looks like in the cell phone realm, CDMA is losing, but uh, CDMA comes up frequently in other domains. So for instance, um, it's not CDMA, it's a different kind of spread spectrum, but Bluetooth uses spread spectrum. Um, there is a provision in Wi-Fi for CDMA. So this does come up in a lot of contexts, and it's, a very, it's, it's quite an interesting and fundamental Technique. So um, the idea is that TDMA and FDMA uh, rigorously avoid interference. So it turns out um, this is this. Trying to desperately avoid interference turns out to be wasteful. So, um, uh, or it's, it's wasteful in the sense that if a user is silent, uh, that user's slot, either in time or frequency, can't be easily reallocated. classic example of this, um, and the one that uh, people talk about a lot in CDMA telephony, is if I'm on the, if I'm on the phone, I'm on my cell phone, uh, there, is, there is a link, there is, there's a dedicated link uh, from me to uh, the other party on the phone call. But if I'm not talking, uh, then I'm not really using the bandwidth. But there's no, there's no really easy way to reallocate that bandwidth to someone else while I'm not talking. Um, the other example would be packet data. So packet data tends to be very bursty. So um, if I've allocated a TDMA slot to transmit my packet data, and I don't need it for a brief period of time, it's not easy to reallocate that to another user who might need it. Um, the other issue is central control. So FDMA and TDMA, in FDMA and TDMA, uh, there needs to be a way to allocate uh, slots to users. Um, so one of those ways is central control. In other words, there's a, there's a central controller that, that has the entire bandwidth and basically dumps you into a slot when you need it, removes you from that slot, and assigns, assigns it to someone else. Um, that's actually not necessarily needed. Central, you, you need either central control or some sort of contention mechanism. So you can either have the boss telling you which slot you can use, or uh, in a contention mechanism you can fight it out. So there's, there's, there's provisions for that. But either way, there has to be some agreed upon way of allocating uh, resources to users, and there will inevitably, there will inevitably be losers. So um, in a contention, in either case, someone can ask for a resource and it won't be present. So CDMA. Uh, addresses these. Uh, spread spectrum addresses these. So it addresses. So what it does is it it, it permits a little bit of interference, um, and in fact, it not just permits it, but it encourages it. So. At any given time, you will be. It will be expected that other other users are interfering with you. So what that means is, because the interference is now allowed, um, and it, it's accounted for in advance, 
central control is no longer required. So in other words, because I expect you to interfere with me, we don't have to, uh, one user doesn't necessarily have to shut up while the other one is talking. They both expect interference so they can both talk at the same time whenever they feel like. Um, there's no problem with reallocation. Uh, so the issue in spread spectrum is that if there's a lot of users uh, present, then the level of interference will go up and that kind of acts like noise. So um, if, if a user is silent, that interference is removed and there's no real issue of, of reallocating resources. So it's just, if you have something to say, then say it. Um, and then that'll push the interference level up a bit. And if you don't have anything to say, then shut up and the interference level goes down a little bit. So there's no issue of allocating resources. There's no issue of uh, making people silent in order, so that, in order for you to say your, uh, in order for you to transmit your packets. Uh, basically what you have to do is you have to tolerate a little bit of interference and in advance, all of the modulation functions are designed to interfere with each other a little bit, not a huge amount, but a little bit. So many flavors of spread spectrum. But we will talk about, we're going to be talking about CDMA, which is code division multiple access. See, it's also called, we will call it CDMA, but it's also sometimes called DSSS, which is direct sequence. So, uh, why is it called this? It's called this because um, in TDMA, you're assigned a time slot. In FDMA, you're assigned a carrier frequency and a bandwidth. In CDMA, what you're assigned is a spreading code. So, in TDMA and FDMA, those resources are allocated so that they don't overlap with anyone else's. CDMA, the spreading codes overlap with other spreading codes a little bit. So we'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, first, let's look at the mechanics of CDMA. Basically, what CDMA is, uh, is usual binary transmission with a strange S0, okay. So in other words, uh, all of the analysis that we have used up to this point still holds, it's just that S0K has a funny form. What do I mean by that? Well. S0K is defined by two things. One of them is called uh, a chip, and one of them is called a chip sequence. So a chip is a sub waveform, making up S0K. And it's basically, it, it's, it's sort of like a bit. So S0K is going to be like a series of bits, uh, a, a fixed sequence of bits that are, that are represented by these chips. So uh, a chip, a chip uh, let's, is, is, is some, kind of, uh, some kind of sampled waveform that I'm going to write as C0K and C1. 